Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of May 7th, 2012. Welcome to the site to all your new members and welcome back to the old. The Ask Video Mail is your chance to get your question in character animation or performance answered in a video just like this one. But I need your question if I'm going to answer it, so please send me your questions to webmaster at KennyRoy.com. I go through all the questions and I answer the ones I think will help the most people. There's no such thing as a dumb question. It's the best way to get the most for your subscription here on this site. You can even send me your Maya file. Some people have taken advantage of that already. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, it's simple and easy. Give it a try today. Thank you for doing that. Uh, as you can see, I have changed to a standing desk. Uh, my my uh, office is all rearranged. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better, feeling uh, better in my back every single day. I had a standing desk when I was at Weta, and I had a standing desk in my last office. Uh, I don't know why, but I just set up with a, a sitting normal desk here when I set up uh, in, this, uh, in this office space last year, and uh, it's been a long time coming. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I hurt my back um, at the 24-hour uh, animation marathon, or actually afterwards, and um, uh, ergonomics is really important to me. There is an Ask Video Mail where I show off uh, uh, this beautiful apparatus right here, which is um, called an Ergo Rest. Oh, you can't see it. Let me just uh, uh, disconnect it and tell you about it. Uh, an Ergo Rest, which has uh, basically been uh, pivotal. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. You'll see what I mean in a second. Gosh, I really screwed it on there. Um, it's been absolutely pivotal in my ergonomics solution because if, if I didn't have this, I probably would have, you know, blown my elbows out a long time ago. Or actually my left elbow, my keyboard elbow. There it is. Ergo rest. Um, you can actually find, if you search for Arconics on YouTube, you can find the er er ergonomics ask video mail that I did uh, a while back. And, and I show you about this. Um, I have my Wacom right here and my uh, Cintiq up there. So everything is all organized and uh, looking good, ready for production, ready to rock and roll and feeling a lot better. So anyway, the Ask Video Mails, this is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit experimental. Um, uh, I know the light right here is a little ghetto. I'm going to try to figure out the perfect lighting setup so that, you know, things look nice. Um, so just bear with me um, for the next couple weeks um, and, and, and things will be good. But um, um, I'm very excited uh, to uh, to do this uh, th this video mail. Um, it's a it's a good one, and I feel like we need a refresher. So let's go ahead and jump into the question here. Great question. Well, this is the this basically the fundamental, uh, uh, basically like thesis of this entire site is that workflow is king. As an animator, you are not your shot that is in front of you, especially if you're like, if you're learning and you're working really close to your shot and you're just, you're, you're just like really, really, really intensely focusing on, on the animation that is on screen, you're gonna get off track because that shot is not going to help you in, in the, the real world. When you get hired, you're going to be paid to sit down or stand, hopefully, <laughs> and animate a uh, shot. And is that shot that, uh, that you just finished going to be, are you going to be able to bring it in to the, to the studio and, and it, you know, copy frames out of it and whatever? No. So as you are learning and as you are practicing, you need to be honing in on a workflow, on a step-by-step -step process that produces predictable, good animation every time for you. And that's your workflow. Now, I give out the workflow uh, checklist, and this is um, something that went with the workflow walkthrough lectures that are available in the store, one, two, and three, where I animate a cartoony flower sack rig, um, jumping up onto a box and slipping off and then like wiggling and getting himself back up there. It's a three-parter, and it's uh, really, really good. And then uh, I also give out not only that scene, but I also give out um, the workflow checklist. This is for everybody. You can download this and share this with everyone in the world. Please have it. Now, Nicole Bloom was really, really nice. She took it, turned it into a uh, PDF with uh, actually check boxes. So if you check it out, um, you can actually check each one of these things um, as, you, uh, as you start thinking about them. Now, this is, as a workflow, you need to have a workflow that is very uh, agile and malleable. 
Um, a workflow is not super, super rigid. In fact, every single time you discover something new and exciting and great that works for you, it needs to find its way into your workflow so you can do it again. So um, this is not literally like everything that I'm going to just like do it and then check it off and do it and check it off. These are basically how I'm thinking about each part of the process for me. So um, um, I'll run through the ones that uh, we're talking about uh, or we're not talking about here like planning and layout and, and, and um, go answer the question directly about blocking, blocking plus and polish. Um, but just really quickly, um, planning. These are all of the tools that I have at my disposal to plan my shot. So thumbnails, reference, acting it out, pencil tests, X sheets, storyboards, and journaling your workflow. If you do any of these as a student, journal your workflow is, is, is the one you should be doing. And all that basically means is that you take a little bit of time. If you're animating for an hour, you take a five minute break, spend that five minutes, stand up, stretch out, and then like write down how that hour went. Just all you will want to write down is just little key points, what you tried, if you tried anything new, if you tried anything old, and just how the shot is progressing. You don't even have to know what you're doing for you to, for, to do this right, okay? It, will, it, it basically will happen to you, the, the, the amazing side effects of, of doing a, a, a journal of your workflow. Trust me, um, after a few months of working, maybe you have like 50 to 75 entries on there, go back and read them. Just start reading them and you'll see how your workflow is honing itself down. It's, it's fantastic. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, layout, staging. So this is where we're actually starting to think about these things as you're working. And, and Nicole wrote these out, but she wrote them um, from, I, I believe, how I described them as I was talking about them in the 24-hour marathon. Deci decide on staging that is clear and inventive and experiment. Okay, nobody can tell what it's going to look like early on, so you need to try things out. And that's tr very true. No one can tell really like if it's right here and then it comes around this side or if it's moved over a little bit and it comes a little closer, like what is it going to look like? You can have a really clear idea in your head and the best directors really do. But until you see it, you, you really won't know exactly what, it, what the best impact is gonna be. So this is the time to really experiment. Again, composition, thinking about composing the shot with interesting shapes and silhouettes. Oops, a uh, little misspell there. I wonder if I can correct that. It will only get muddier from here on in. So you have to start really strong to end up with something strong in the end. And that's very true as well. The definition of polish is to basically like buff down those rough edges and turn it into something smooth. So by definition, you're going to get a lot of muddying um, from what you have. And then story, before you block, ask yourself, does this tell a story? So let's talk about blocking. Basically, the, what separates first, what f first and foremost separates blocking from blocking plus is the fact that um, you are actually creating the poses and creating the um, timing in blocking. And the easiest way to do that is um, with uh, stepped keys. Um, fundamental approach just means that you um, are using the fundamentals to inform your choices of the poses you're going to do. And you can build things into your poses like overlap and it works great, okay? Thinking about keyframe economy, you're not actually animating straight ahead, even though you might see something as um, straight ahead, you're actually trying to figure out how are you going to use your poses and your timing to um, stick close to the original boiled down distilled idea. All right, we're sticking as close to the idea as we can at this point still. So even if you know exactly where a breakdown will go, you're not thinking about that yet. You don't put that in yet, okay? Editability, same thing. Working with the graph editor open, um, just because as you are working, if you see the curves like build themselves, you will be so much more familiar with the shot and be able to edit it later. Inner monologue as a timing tool, this is a really great um, trick, which is record a piece of inner monologue or a sound effects track. Um, that's the way that a lot of directors uh, uh, direct anyway. A vast virus database has been updated. Thank you. Unbelievable. Um, I gotta turn that off. <clears throat> so, um, 
this is the way that a lot of directors uh, direct anyways with sound effects. Like, you know, I don't want it to go like, I want it to go, and then you're like, okay, well, that sounds good. And then they walk away and then you, you're stuck thinking to yourself, okay, it's on, it's on fours right now. And then there's this two frames. Why not just like take that sound effect it's, it's your sound effects track or it's your inner monologue or whatever. Record it, slug it into the timeline, and then you have a perfect, you know, basically just like this metronome that you can animate the beats, hitting them hard in your Maya file and, and not lose any of that really dynamic timing, okay? Uh, performance texture in, um, in animation that is very performance based like high performance and not as much physicality there's there's a lot of chance for performance texture um, performance uh, is when is when there is something that is part of the performance that is going to be a like a, a different size or shape or frequency or 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 timing something that it breaks from the, the smooth motion that you're putting in and for instance, performance texture might be if a character has a line and then they take a big inhale and then like a kind of like a shuddering exhale, like, hey, I don't want you to go over there because <sighs> it's scary, something like that. It's fine in blocking to put the <laughs> like just those little like micro things in because you don't you don't want those to get edited out or or polished out. OK. So we're, we're in blocking still. And what that means is, is that we have stepped keys that are very, very, very strong, super iconic, very just like absolutely gorgeous silhouettes. And, and, and the timing is, um, is in there. You've made all your timing choices, hopefully maybe using a trick like in a monologue as a timing tool to make them even more easily uh, uh, available, readily available to you. Now, before you say to yourself, okay, well, I'm done blocking, what you need to ask yourself is, am I at the point where I cannot get any stronger of my poses? I can't get any more dynamic in my timing. I can't get any more clever with the subtlety. I can't get any more um, interest in the little texture that I built in. I can't get any more... Uh, 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 engaging composition I can't get any more all these things and you don't stop until you are sure that you have all those things in it's not that when you're not done blocking once you have animation that is basically like good and now it's time to improve it so I'm going to go into blocking plus I'm going to spline this out no blocking is your last chance to get unfiltered, unadulterated, pure energy into your shot. Everything else from now on is going to be a struggle, all right? And I always say that it's much better to have insanely iconic silhouettes that, that just like blow your mind and have to basically like scrap and fight to make the timing work than to have super smooth motion that kind of like cruises in and out of weaker posing. So if you're going to err on one side or the other, it's always, always better to err on the side of the strong posing than the timing that seems like it's just working itself out naturally. It's really easy for you, okay? But once you're at, once you're at that point where all of those things have been created and they are as powerful as they can be, then you can say, okay, now this is blocked. All right, blocking plus for me is when I take my step keys and I turn them into copied pairs. And all that means is that you define the length of your moving hold. Actually, the video mail last week I talked about, uh, I, I did a, drew a little illustration of this concept, but it's basically you're just defining the length of your holds and how long you're holding your poses. I like to use clamped. I like to convert all of my keys from stepped to clamped because it preserves my moving holds and it actually gives me overshoot in a spline fashion when there's enough of a difference in the keys. And, it, and Maya's pretty smart about how it does that. And then I convert it all to clamped, but then I set my default out tangent to auto key when I'm working. So I, I'm in stepped, convert to clamped, work with auto key, or with auto tangent rather, sorry.
okay? And then um, I am in blocking plus. Now blocking plus is where you are adding all of your in-betweens and your breakdowns. You are really, really, really falling back on the fundamentals. What that means is that the first thing that you try when your performance is starting to lack is to adjust those fundamentals that you have built the scene with. All right, not just say like, oh, I'm gonna sprinkle in some squash and stretch in the spine. No, if your guy is, is looking you know, happy, but he's supposed to be even happier, then you say to yourself, okay, well, what, what is in there fundamentally that I can adjust that is really easy for me to see the results of quickly? And that's what that means. Arcs, now is when you're starting to think to yourself, I really need um, everything to move on really, really nice arcs. And as you're adding those breakdowns and in-betweens, those are when the arcs comes around. Weight check, always look where the center of gravity is on your character. Um, remember, in blocking, you're saying like, I want just the most amazing iconic poses. So the person might be over here, and then they might be down here like this. Like, how did you get them from up here to down here? You don't care in blocking because, because you want that super awesome pose and then you want that super awesome pose that's over there. You're going to, you're, you're creating problems for yourself, but they're good problems to have. And, and these are the problems that we work out as animators. So in blocking plus, that's when a weight check has to happen. You need to, you need to do a couple passes where you're just watching your, your animation over and over again and just like watching where is the center of gravity right now and is, is he supposed to be falling over and I, I just haven't really done my weight shifts or anything correct yet. Comparing thumbs. What that means is that you're going to be uh, in, in, in blocking plus, you're going to be start losing that strong posing. It's the beginning of that buffing down of those, those really iconic um, images. So compare it back to your thumbs. I like to import my thumbnails um, into a, a camera in, in Maya and that I can switch to. So I don't have to navigate through Windows Explorer or whatever. It's great to just have your thumbs nearby or if they're on a piece of paper, just like have that out so you can just compare. Watch it at speed. All right, now is a time when your timing choices are going to be slightly changed because our brain fills in when we have stepped keys. So you need to watch it at speed to diagnose your problems. And then make lists for notes. Um, I go at length about this in the advanced workflow lecture. It's one of the first lectures I did. It's in the store uh, right now. Now, this is one of the more important or more uh, drastic uh, transitions um, from blocking to blocking plus. It's kind of straightforward, but when are you polishing? Well, polish, <clears throat> is a totally new mindset. It is not a continuation of blocking plus. Okay, so you're not adding anything. Uh, you're just adjusting. And I like to use this analogy in the uh, advanced workflow lecture, but this is a um, analog mixer. Okay, and it has all of these um, sliders, these faders, and it also has um, knobs. So basically what you are doing is you're building this as you are working, okay? You're, you're creating all of this. This might be the amount of overlap that is on the spine in the walk. This might be the, the size of the gesture, uh, the size of the arm flail when, when the character comes to a stop. Uh, this up here might be um, how big he opens his mouth on that, that, that screen that he does. So you're building all of this, all right? Polish is when all you're done building. This is the entire shot. I'm not gonna get any more um, on here. Polish is just when you start making all of your little adjustments. Like, how does that feel? How does that look? All right, let's just get a little bit more of that. Let's get a little less of this, all right? All you're doing is fine tuning and tweaking what you've built into the scene so far. And that means that you can't, by definition, sorry, it's like, it's like crazy. I got things popping and booming and going off. I apologize. Um, what that means is that you, by definition, can't go into polish if you have anything more to add to this. All right, so that's the very easiest way to, to, to tell yourself that it is time to polish because everything is here, okay? 
and you can't start polishing too soon, um, especially in production, because your director might might come, you might think that you have everything, but your director might come by your desk and say, oh no, we, we, we need this, 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 and this. And then f all of a sudden you're adding more to that, that, that mixer, okay? So it's very, very, very clear. Once you, once you actually really think about it and get down into it, it actually is very clear that moment when you go from blocking plus to polish, okay? Um, finally, um, things you are um, adding is non-performance texture. These are things like breaths or little hits or whatever. It's just when you're dirtying up your keys. Um, making sure your arcs, adjusting your arcs, doing another weight check, making sure like, you know, the hips are over the center of gravity. If you're doing a weight shift, those kinds of things. Don't polish too early, of course, we just covered that. And then the final 5%, toe splays, blinks, and tiny little things. Okay, so hopefully that makes it a lot more clear. I'm going to attach the workflow checks, checklist with boxes. Thank you again, Nicole Bloom, for, for doing that. And um, I hope everyone downloads this and, and, and uses this uh, with your scenes. So thank you for sending in that question. Please send in a question if you haven't already. The address to send them to is webmaster at kennyroy.com. I promise there's no such thing as a dumb question. Please send it in if you haven't already. I'm having a great time. Yay, standing desk. Yay, better back. Um, join me next week. Thanks a lot. Good luck with your animation. And as always, rock on.